Hello, Mrs. Nelson here. I'm going to talk about heart rate and heartbeat and what all that means and how it affects you um, as far as exercise and health, um, overall health and all of that. So to start off with, let's talk about what does it mean? Why do you have to have a heartbeat? Why does that blood have to move through your system? It goes back to basic biology that you probably learned um, freshman or sophomore year. And if you remember, we, in biology, we talked about cellular respiration. So every cell in your body has mitochondria and they break down food and oxygen and make carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So um, when you exercise, your muscles have a lot of mitochondria so that they can do that pretty quickly for you. Um, also, your liver has a ton of mitochondria. Your brain cells have a lot of mitochondria. Almost half of the energy you consume every day is almost a fourth of the energy consumed every day is for your brain. So very busy cells. Now, red blood cells do not have any mitochondria. Um, when they mature, they have no nucleus either. So um, just interesting fact to note. Um, so we breathe in the oxygen, we eat food ultimately to feed all of our cells. So every cell gets oxygen and food from our bloodstream and then releases its waste products of carbon dioxide and water back into the bloodstream. Um, so when we exhale, that is where the carbon dioxide and water that we exhale originally comes from, from our cells. Um, and so all of that is carried around the body and then it diffuses in or out depending on the concentrations um, in your bloodstream. So a little more anatomy. This is not to scale. You have your heart in the center there. All of the deoxygenated blood, the blood that is carrying that carbon dioxide and, that, and water um, from your cells is going into the right side of the heart and then it will be pumped into the lungs. So that is when that transfer takes place. So oxygen that you breathe in into the lungs will get into the bloodstream and the carbon dioxide that you breathe out is going to diffuse across the membranes into the lungs and out of your mouth and nose. Uh, then it will go back into the left side of the heart to be pumped to the rest of the body. We can feel our pulse, our heart rate, um, and we usually use a couple places. There's more places than this, but this is uh, what we typically use when we're checking ourselves or somebody else. Um, you have uh, your carotid artery that goes up your neck, and if you put your uh, two fingers right there in the crook of your neck, you should be able to feel your pulse in your neck. Um, you can also feel it in your radial artery, which is in your wrist, and also use your uh, pointer finger and middle finger. Um, your thumb actually gets some of some pulse from that radial artery, and so sometimes using your thumb can be problematic. So first, how do you find your resting heart rate? You need to be resting. That hopefully makes sense. Um, so you find your pulse and then you time for 10 seconds and count. So you will take, um, and understand that there's 60 seconds in a minute. So we will take whatever we get times six, uh, to figure out how many beats per minute. Um, so if you get 11 beats in 10 seconds, then your heart rate is 66 beats per minute. And this is, of course, we're talking about resting heart rate. So at rest, laying down, see, seated, and relaxed. Um, for an adolescent, 60 to 110 beats per minute is considered a normal range. And as you can see, that's a pretty broad range, but uh, that's because we're all a little different. Now, one thing for reference is knowing your maximum heart rate. So you will subtract your age from 220 to find your maximum heart rate. And so if you are 15 years old, you subtract 15 from 220 and your maximum heart rate would be 205. 
Understand we're not trying to reach that maximum heart rate, um, unless you're an elite athlete, maybe. Um, but that's just kind of a point of reference for when we talk about uh, your levels of exercise. So exercise goals. You, If you are trying to do moderate exercise, burn lots of calories, maybe losing weight, whatever, um, your heart rate should be 50 to 70 percent of your maximum heart rate. So if you're if we're going by the number that you're a 15 year old and your maximum heart rate is 205, then half of that would be about 103 and 70 percent would be about 144. So that would be a, an acceptable range for kind of moderate exercise. Um, during this time, if you're doing moderate exercise, you should be able to talk, um, carry on a conversation while you're exercising. That's another indicator without actually taking your pulse. Um, vigorous exercise, you want to bring your heart rate to 70 or 80% or 85% of your maximum heart rate. Um, so that would be 144 to 174 for a 15 year old. And um, this is when it gets a little harder to talk when you're exercising. There's a lot of charts um, online, or if you go to the gym, they will have these posted all around, just to give you an idea of what you should be going for. So notice if you're doing moderate exercise, here they say 70, 80% of your maximum heart rate range, and you should be able to do that 10 to 40 minutes, improves aerobic fitness, you will feel some fatigue, um, not hard breathing, um, some sweating. And this is typical people should be doing this on a regular basis. Um, notice the maximum heart rate is generally very fit people who are trying to um, maximize their sprints or exertion um, for their sport. Another measure of fitness is how quickly your heart can re return to its resting rate. So um, if you take your heart rate after you've stopped mm -hmm. exercising and uh, you should see 15 to 20 beats per minute drop, if you don't, that just means you need to work a little harder on the fitness. So that's a few things about the heart and now Hello. we'll do some So this practice. is my son, James. <laughs> He's 13 and he's going to be my subject for the exercise portion of this video. So first of all, he's been resting on the couch for a while. So I need him to take his pulse. So I'm going to tell him when to start and he'll count his pulse for 10 seconds until I say stop. Are you ready? And Sixteen. Sixteen. All right. So sixteen times six is whoops, I got a calculator. So right now his resting heart rate is ninety six beats per minute. And so he is going to ride the bike for two minutes. We're going to see if we can raise that heart rate to help him um, raise his breathing rate and heartbeat. Go, baby, go. <laughs> Since his muscles are working harder, his mitochondria are working harder, and they will need more oxygen and need to get rid of more carbon dioxide and water. And so as he's working out, his breathing will get heavier, his heartbeat will get faster. So we'll see how fast shortly. And stop. All right, now take your pulse. I'll tell you when to start. Ready? Go. Stop. 
27. 26. So definitely faster than what it was before. And we're going to give you a minute and then we're going to take it again. So 27 times 6. Your exercise heart rate was 162. And we're going to look at um, his maximum heart rate, remember, is 220 minus his age. So 220 minus 13 is 207. So he was at about 78% of his maximum heart rate. So got up a good moderate level um, of exercise there. It's been about a minute. So let's take your heart rate again. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Whoops. Just done with the reset. And go. Stop. 13. 13. Good. So 13 times 6. is 78 so his heart rate has dropped considerably in that minute after he exercised so that's a good sign and just wanted to let you see how this works so you can try it at home thanks for watching